your book which you wrote after retirement bullet for bullet which uh, you 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 made certain references to practices at the highest level which were kind of counter terrorism practices which were employed through which some rogue cops emerged is this a general tactic for law enforcement look this was that was a very different type of situation now i had come, gone from western india from maharashtra i, I my roots are in goa i've lived all my life in bombay i was born here i worked in the police in maharashtra and also a little bit in the crp but we uh, never employed tactics we never had a problem of terrorism okay. where people do not care for the state they don't accept the rule of the state what we were dealing with is the underworld and the underworld in bombay i mean they try and and bribe the the cops they don't shoot them they bribe them whereas there there was no question of bribery they just put a bullet through you so it's your bullet first or my bullet first who is going to shoot the first bullet now i know that when i first went there and uh, i had a problem of the police officers from uh, policemen and police officers coming and telling me you are telling us that there should be no uh, illegal methods but let me tell you that we when we go out in the field in the night we are shot because we are in uniform whereas those persons we don't know whether they are terrorists or whether they are farmers so you allow us to to go in plain clothes so that was the first kind of problem that was put before me and because the chief minister mr badnala he told me that at night the police have surrendered to the to the terrorists in the daytime the police harass the people in the night the terrorists harass them he said what is this what is the people suffering both side they suffer now when i tell them you go out in the night to patrol they say that they we are shot because we are in uniform and we can't shoot first so they said that let us also go in in plain clothes with guns which is a dangerous thing but then uh, i had a problem on hand i mean i didn't know what to do because it's a fact that they would do that and uh, uh, if you allow policemen to go in uniform i mean in plain clothes with guns then you don't know whether they are terrorists what do the people know it's a huge problem we have to sort it out in the way that uh, we sorted it out so that which means that when you're dealing with things like terrorism you sometimes have to give the go by to the book and the principles well principles i don't know but uh, uh the book is some is difficult and now let me tell you that i discussed it even with the with the judiciary i had a personal discussion with the judiciary they said don't bring those people in front of us because they shoot us after that now it's a fact now let me tell many you many judges were that, lost in punjab yeah that in that uh, on the black thunder and black thunder 2 where we stopped them out and they came we thought it was an open and shut case it was shown all over the world 9 days they were in yes. it, uh, they were in our grip and if we didn't uh, we, we didn't stop the we gave a special uh, ringside seat to the press media and it was flashed all over the world uh, we thought it was a, and and yet they were all acquitted because the judges were afraid now what do we do about that so the blames can't so only be on the police all the everything is on the side of the terrorists now Uh, there is no shall we say uh, equal uh, 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 level playing field because you say you follow the rules they say they we don't follow any rules then who how do how do the people this uh, get some relief from this because they would say that you are your state terrorism you are uh, uh, you are you, the human rights of the terrorists are being are being violated what about the human rights of the people who have been killed they have done nothing i agree that it is a human right violation on both sides yes okay and but then here at least the, the we were doing something against terrorists whereas those were doing against innocent people i i think that it is a very difficult and only people who are actually Basically. dealing with it know what is it I, i certainly used to feel very bad about what was being done but then what do i do 
give me any solution to this and I'll accept it. Was Mr. KPS Gill brought in because you were not hardline enough? Well, KPS Gill uh, wanted to come. He, was been, he had been trying for a long time. He had been trying. And then finally, there was nobody willing. I asked so many people. I asked so many people from Maharashtra, but none of them was willing to come there. Then only KPS Gill was the only person who was willing to come. Yet, there was a lot of opposition to him, even from Mr. Barnala. My own batchmate who belonged to his community and said, a very nice man, he phoned me from Bhopal <laughs> and he told me, Julio, don't take that fellow, he will, he will stab you in the back. So I said, well, what do, how will he stab me in the back? He said, he will, he will dislodge you. I said, but I never asked for this post, let him dislodge. There's no problem about that. And finally it so happened that when I was uh, under, I'd come here quietly for surgery, uh, prostate was giving trouble. In, the, in that one month that I was away, he, he did manage to, to kick me up. I mean, I became the uh, advisor to the governor <laughs> and he became the DGP. I didn't bother. I said, when they, when they told me that we're going to make you advisor, I said, fine. In fact, I thought it was a good thing. At least the people will know who the real Ribeiro is. Otherwise, they'll say in uniform, no one will come near you. They'll think you are the, the, devil's, the devil himself. But then after that, I went and met them. I went to their villages. I went, I, I took Mr. Chamanlal with me till Mr. Gill stopped Chamanlal from, he said that he's making the police so, look very soft. So whereas I went and talked to the people, and what is this nonsense that is going on? How can you kill innocent people? Is that the Sikh ethos to kill innocent people? And then they understood that is not, in what way were they, it was uh, benefiting, they were not benefiting in any way. No state is going to allow you to, 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 to win. No state will allow you to win. So finally, they, the people themselves went against the terrorists. That is how the whole battle was won. Unless you have the people on your side of that community to which, the, in, in fact, about this question of this uh, jihadi kind of terrorism, I have personally spoken to um, to the then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, I had a long talk with him. I said that, we, we, you know what happened in Punjab, why don't they ensure the same thing happens here? Should treat people with respect, people with dignity, then they will come on your side. If they're, they don't want any particular this, you are trying to say, give them jobs, give them this, all that we know is all humbug. What you should do is treat, treat people equally. With people with respect, they should be equal citizens of this country. If that happens, they'll come on your side because they'll find that they are losing out. And that is how you should, what happened in, in Punjab. <laughs>